Hello, I'm Jason Howland. Welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. Arthritis is one of the most common health problems in the U.S. Millions of Americans have some form of arthritis that leads to pain, stiffness, and loss of motion. Many of those folks are over the age of 65, but people of all ages, including children, can be affected by arthritis. Our guest today is Becky Ness. She is a physician assistant who practices in the specialty of internal medicine at Mayo Clinic Health System. Becky, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Well, arthritis is our topic today, as I said. Let's begin by defining what exactly is arthritis. Okay. Well, arthritis is an inflammation within the joint. It can cause pain, stiffness, swelling at times, typically worsens with age. Um, and the two main types of arthritis we'll talk about are osteoarthritis, secondary to normal wear and tear, and then rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune condition. So uh, what are the common symptoms of arthritis? Most commonly people notice pain or stiffness. There can be some swelling, particularly with rheumatoid arthritis or an infective type of arthritis, there can be redness. And the biggest uh, issue is a, a decrease in the range of motion. When you talk about pain for arthritis, uh, often is it a sharp pain or is it like a dull, uh, long-lasting pain? It kind of depends. People can um, experience a, a kind of a multitude of mm -hmm. types of pains. Most of the time we hear that it's stiff, achy, mm -hmm. kind of just sore all around. There can be sometimes when there's a sharp um, significant pain. Um, osteoarthritis pain tends to be worse until we start moving and get the joint moving and then it lessens to some degree and sometimes completely goes away. With rheumatoid arthritis it can be incredibly debilitating and last um, without relief with motion. You just talked about the two main types of arthritis. Let's talk uh, first about a little bit more about osteoarthritis. How common is osteoarthritis and, and what joints does it often affect? Well, osteoarthritis is our most common type of arthritis, typically affecting um, uh, older individuals. However, there are young, uh, younger people who can suffer it, um, especially if they've had recurrent injuries or trauma to a joint. Um, with osteoarthritis, the synovial joint, kind of the area where the cartilage covers the bone, gradually wears away after repetitive use and kind of constant contact with each other. This results in the bones kind of rubbing together and at that area we can get new bone formation called osteophytes which are seen on x-ray. Because of those bones rubbing together it causes inflammation and swelling in the area which causes uh, pain. Most common joints affected can be the smaller joints in the hand to some extent the wrist, but really the one we hear the most about is in the hips and the knees, and to some extent the low back. And is that uh, because those are more uh, weight-bearing joints, so they, they bear a, a lot of the body's brunt? Absolutely. They tend to they carry us in no, um, all settings except for when we're lying down. Even when we're sitting, there's some degree of pressure, particularly in the low back and the hip. So does the cartilage sort of act like a, a tire on a car, uh, and then over time it, uh, it's wearing down and... and that's what osteoarthritis really is, or is it different than that? Kind of. A different example that I give to my patients is if you have a chicken bone, mm -hmm. and the ends are kind of nice and shiny, and then the dog gnaws on them, or you're scraping the, the uh, meat off of the bone, and you can kind of see how it gets frayed and irritated and dull instead of that nice, smooth, shiny. That's kind of what happens. So uh, let's talk about rheumatoid arthritis. So that is different from osteoarthritis. It is. Rheumatoid arthritis is what's considered an autoimmune condition, meaning the body's immune system is starting to attack itself. And in rheumatoid arthritis, it um, affects the lining of the joint capsule. That's a tough membrane that kind of encloses the joint. And as the body's immune system attacks that, um, it uh, causes inflammation and swelling within that joint, and over time, destruction of the joint itself. So uh, why exactly is the body's immune system attacking its own uh, joints? We don't know 100% why rheumatoid arthritis. It, there's a number of theories out there um, on what can cause it. It is a uh, hereditary condition. Um, so you have a greater risk of being female, and if there's someone in your immediate family um, or like a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle who has uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, because it affects the joints, it sounds like arthritis, whether it's osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or other, uh, that it really can cause a lot of complications in people's lives, especially with movement. It can. Um, 
as arthritis progresses and it becomes more severe, it can really decrease the quality of life, uh, make, make it difficult to brush your hair, do buttons, clasps, things that require um, small movements, mm -hmm. but specific movements. It also makes it difficult to change position, getting up, walking, climbing stairs, getting in and out of a vehicle. So uh, who's at more at risk for getting arthritis? Are there uh, certain people that just uh, are more at risk for getting it? Well, like I said before, particularly with rheumatoid arthritis, but to some extent with osteoarthritis, the family history, um, people who tend to be overweight can be uh, more at risk. If there has been a previous injury or trauma to the joint can increase the risk of arthritis developing, and age is a big one. Uh, and when you say family history, are you talking uh, immediate family, or can it skip a generation, or is, is it all random? It all depends. It kind of depends on the arthritis in the family. Um, there are uh, families where it's generation after generation after generation, and then there's others where it's kind of sporadic and it'll skip one or two generations, but it's still there. And when you say a uh, previous injury to the joint, so would that be someone uh, like for example, has a sports injury to their knee or something similar to that or a different kind of injury? Runners who have just kind of a constant impact type injury, um, lacrosse players, um, that type of thing. And then also people, um, professions like people, um, carpet layers, electricians, plumbers who spend a lot of time bent over, small mm -hmm. conditions, on their knees, hard floors. Um, people who work in warehouses who spend a lot of time on cement floors that don't have a lot of cushion can cause um, increased wear and tear to those joints. So uh, when someone has been diagnosed with arthritis, uh, how do you as their provider, how do you help them treat it? Well, the first thing that we focus on are things that they can do to help slow down the progression uh, of the disease and to some extent re reverse it, such as weight loss, regular physical activity. There are over-the-counter medications that can be used. Um, acetaminophen or Tylenol is probably the most recommended. Uh, there are some anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen, Advil, ex um, Excedrin, Aleve, um, but those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications can interact with a lot of medications and aren't really recommended with other health conditions, so we recommend that you follow up with your health care provider before you would take any of those. Physical activity to help keep the joint lubricated um, and moving like walking, swimming, bike riding. Um, application of heat like a hot wet towel or a hot pack can be really helpful. And there's topical medications available over the counter like Aspercream, Myoflex, Bengay that have some inflammatory, um, anti-inflammatory component to it. Um, Biofreeze is another one that's available without a prescription. And then there's prescription anti-inflammatories like Diclofenac that can be helpful as well. And all of those um, um, medications, should you talk to your provider before you start taking them? I would recommend it because mm -hmm. depending on the type of arthritis, the severity and the joint involved, there's going to be different recommendations on how often to use them or apply them. So uh, what about physical therapy? Can physical therapy help? It can. Physical therapy can be really beneficial. Um, it can act as kind of a catalyst to get people moving and active again because you kind of have a coach alongside you helping you with what activities to do, how to do them, how often to do them. Uh, one or two sessions with a physical therapist to show you how to do an activity safely um, to f prevent further harm can be beneficial as well. Because I would imagine that's often the problem with folks with arthritis is, is that um, uh, they make do by doing things that are actually probably causing more harm as far as movement goes with their body, and physical therapy can probably help them with that, right? They, they can, yep, because what the physical therapist will do is the proper technique to do an exercise. Mm -hmm. It'll also give stretching and strengthening activities for the muscles above and below the joint to help with stability and to lessen the impact on that joint. What about surgery? Um, are there surgical procedures that can help uh, alleviate pain and symptoms with arthritis? There are. Um, you know, in-office procedures, um, they can do a corticosteroid injection into the knee to de or the joint affected to kind of decrease um, the inflammation. Um, but when those modalities fail or the pain becomes too great, um, we'll do a total joint replacement, most commonly in the hips uh, and the knees. Um, not too many of the other joints at this point have been uh, corrected surgically uh, in that regard. And when it comes to uh, joint replacement surgery like that, does that uh, eliminate the arthritis completely? It can in, in very many people. Um, the biggest thing with joint replacement surgery is you have to do the physical therapy, you have to stay active, you have to abide by the restrictions of how to move, how not to move um, with that joint because you can do damage to an artificial joint as well and that a lot of times causes more pain than it fixed. Uh, what about alternative medicine, things like uh, acupuncture, yoga, that kind of thing? Do those uh, help? 
They can. They can actually be very beneficial. Yoga and Tai Chi, I recommend to almost all of my patients, whether they have arthritis or not, but particularly to those with arthritis because, again, it's minimal impact, gradual range of motion to help with balance, stability, and strength. And then acupuncture um, is up and coming. More insurance companies are covering the procedure, but it can be very beneficial for the pain and the inflammation involved in um, arthritis as well. All right, so uh, what advice do you have for people who want to, uh, they don't have arthritis, but they want to prevent it from occurring down the road, or for folks that already do have arthritis, maybe it's not so severe, but they want to prevent it from becoming severe. Right, right. Probably the biggest things is maintain a healthy weight. If you're overweight, work with your healthcare provider, dietitian, healthcare team in losing the weight, maintaining a healthy weight that decreases the stress and the impact on those weight-bearing joints like the hips and knees. Exercise is very, very important. It's kind of a catch-22. It's mm -hmm. stiff, I'm sore, I don't want to move. But once you get up and moving and get that joint moving, um, the pain should lessen and maintaining um, your physical activity will actually help slow the progression of arthritis. Things like walking, biking, swimming, water aerobics, water walking, those types of things. They're non-weight bearing because of the water's buoyancy takes the heaviness um, off of the joint and can be really beneficial. So you don't need to run a marathon or uh, lift no. uh, bench press 250 pounds. No, none of the, you know, don't be a weekend warrior. Mm -hmm. Don't sit on the couch or sit in your office all week and then go out and try and do, you know, mm -hmm. an Iron Man on the weekend or something without training. But just regular physical activity. Um, if you have a dog, walk it. Dogs love walks. If you have young children or grandchildren, play with them. Go to the park, go on bike rides, go on walks in the woods. Those types of things are going to really help keep you mobile, keep you limber, uh, and keep you moving. So Becky, uh, here in the Midwest, you know, we have very cold, harsh winters, yes, and you often hear uh, uh, folks that say, um, you know, I know a storm's coming because uh, my knee is acting up. So can arthritis be affected by our environment? It can. Um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, warmth is very beneficial. So usually in the warm, humid summers, we don't tend to have too much of a problem. Um, as it gets colder, as the barometric pressure changes, that can actually affect the inflammatory response in the body, which is why people say, oh, yep, yeah, we're going to get a storm. I can feel it in my knee. Mm -hmm. um, but the cold can do that, too, because it affects blood flow. It affects um, the stiffness of the muscles and the joints. Um, so it's not uncommon when it's cold, when it's damp, when it's raining, um, to have a little bit of a flare or to feel a flare uh, in the arthritis symptoms. And also, uh, when f folks do have arthritis, do they often, uh, are there certain times of the day that they may um, feel those symptoms more often? Like, for example, you know, right when they get up out of bed or perhaps if they've, you know, been exerting themselves a lot or does it just pop up whenever? Well, with rheumatoid arthritis, it can kind of be a constant thing because mm -hmm. it's actual destruction of the joint line because of the um, autoimmune process. In osteoarthritis, people tend to have symptoms upon... Um, waking up in the morning because they've been immobile in one position all night long, or if they've been sitting, playing cards, watching a television program, sitting at their desk for a long time at work, and those first couple of steps when they get up and try and get to moving around, or if they've kind of been a couch potato all winter and hermited inside like most of us have a tendency to do, and then when it gets nicer out and you want to go for a walk and do things, you're going to be a little bit more stiff and sore, but usually within the first couple of minutes of movement, the pain with osteoarthritis tends to lessen. And there is no cure for arthritis, correct? No, there is not. So, uh, so it's basically um, preventing, trying to prevent arthritis from occurring or lessening the symptoms or helping al alleviate the symptoms. Correct. Right. The biggest thing that we really try and focus on is prevention. So, Becky, you mentioned uh, heat as being um, a treatment for arthritis symptoms, things like a heating pad or a... Uh, uh, a heat, heat pack. Uh, can that be overdone? Can you give your body a little, your you, joints too much heat? You can, actually, yep. Um, I know they sell over-the-counter Thermacare wraps and those types of things. I'm really cautious of those. My personal preference is a hot, wet towel because it's going to gradually cool with exposure to the ambient air temperature. Really what the goal with heat therapy is no more than 10 to 15 minutes in any given application. Too much heat, usually 15 to 20 minutes or greater, is actually going to cause an inflammatory response, which is going to be counterintuitive to what we're trying to do. All right. Well, unfortunately, we are all out of time, but I'd like to thank our guest today, Becky Ness, physician assistant from Mayo Clinic Health System, for joining us today on Speaking of Health, a great topic. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Have a great day, everyone, and be healthy.